The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose at GTC 2025. I am in the Cohesity booth with my friend Sanjay Poonin. How are you? That's great to be here. Love, we got all the music and fanfare here. It's been great. You no, know, with the excitement, and I have to tell you, one thing that I really appreciate about all of this AI wave is that there are a few laws, a few things that are even more important. First of all, AI is hybrid. Yes. And the second thing is that data needs to be protected every step of the way. And with AI, data is being used in many different ways. But we will get there. Yes. I just needed to get that off my chest. Yes. So, Last time we chatted was deal day close with Veritas Data Protection. Uh, can you uh, get us up to speed? How did it go? How's the integration going? What are you hearing from customers? Yeah, no, I think, in fact, it's been about three months uh, since we talked and since we closed the transaction. We've come together as one team to organize uh, our go-to-market, our R&D. I've been talking to, you know, I set myself the goal to talk to about a thousand customers mostly Veritas customers, I wanted to talk to them. Well down that path, I probably will over 500. Uh, very good feedback from our innovation plans. Uh, you know, the thing that I've emphasized to our teams and to customers is we're gonna move fast. We're gonna be a two billion revenue startup. Right. So we are very focused on innovation and we're very focused on customer obsession. And you know, they say never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. And quite frankly, you had a lot of conversations into the run-up as you were getting approval for this. And everybody, you know, I'm sure you had those conversations and then it does come to execution. So let's let's swivel to NVIDIA here. We're here at GTC. This is, the activity is, is amazing here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the relationship with NVIDIA? What have you done so far and what are you announcing here at GTC? Yeah, uh, it was January 24 last year that I briefed Jensen on what we were doing. He was very impressed. He put it pretty simply. Cohesity backs up the world's data. We want yeah. you to build your AI applications like Gaia right. on top of GPUs and the enterprise AI stack, which we agreed to do. And we've had a great partnership. They put money into the company at last funding round. Uh, they're on our board of observers, uh, Jensen's team. So we have, a, and I have a regular, you know, three or four times a year to sync yeah. up with them. We're very excited about it. We launched Gaia. It works on unstructured data. We started off in the cloud. And the big news uh, this year is we're bringing it on-prem. So it can now run on HPE or Cisco or Nutanix or Dell type servers. And then you can bring all of that stack so that you can take your resident data that you're not ready to take into the cloud. And then we're implementing even more capabilities inside that AI stack of NVIDIA. So the partnership with NVIDIA is going incredible. They're, we're the only data protection company in our space that has both an investment from NVIDIA right. and is working so strategically with them. No, this is great. And listen, I, I have been espousing the benefits of the hybrid multi-cloud. And I believe that the winners uh, in this next age uh, you have to operate in the public cloud and you have to operate on ground. Yes. But I would like for you to explain to the audience who might not be familiar with Gaia, what does Gaia do? Yeah. Uh, how does it work? What are the benefits to, to your customers? Well, the way we named Gaia, we were building a generative AI app or generative AI agent. And the code name was generative AI app, Gaia. And we just stuck the name because it also happens to be the Greek goddess of wisdom or something like that. Right. It's a very simple agent or app by which you can search and summarize anything in your backup data, primarily unstructured data. So let me give you an example. Imagine you have 200 million contracts that are in backup, and they represent all the contracts you've done over the history of your time. And you want to summarize all the economic terms you've given your vendors over the last 10 years. Please summarize in a table all the economic terms, discounts, your length of duration. Right. And it buzz, just like you would do a chat GPT, yeah. it goes, gets that data out, builds a vector database on the fly, and then summarizes it with some call to a, a, a LLM of your choice. That all happens in the cloud today. We've taken that cable on ground. We think the use cases of that primarily an unstructured data, files, images maybe in the future. Structured data we'll get to yeah. later on, but legally discovery, a variety right. of places where you're looking, contract document discovery, uh, this is the first time you can use AI to get insights on your backup data. In the past, backup data was like this tape. In the past, sure. it was literally a tape. We're making that tape now a lake. Let me ask you this, as a user, I'm curious, 
how enterprises, right, they have uh, live data, or we'll call it fresh data, and you have backup data. How do they orchestrate? Does the user have to know, hey, this is in backup data? Or is there a way a system can just know? It does a search on all contracts. Some of it might be more recent data. Some of it might be in backup. How does that work? Yeah, we don't expect to be the tool of choice for search. Yeah. It could be an Amazon Q, it could be a Copilot, it could be Google Gemini. In fact, we announced an integration with this small company called Glee. Yeah. We could feed the back. We are the receptacle repository of all backup data in the world yeah. if we're successful. Uh, for customers who want to search that data, we will have a search capability inside Gaia. But we will also be an API mechanism to feed Amazon Bedrock okay. or Google, uh, yeah. they're going to call it Agent Space, I think. We used yeah. to call it Google Spark or Glean. So think of us as like a large snowflake or Databricks unstructured data right. data bag. In the hundreds of petabytes, exabytes, yeah. hundreds of exabytes. That data now is visible either through a tool we built called Gaia or we'll expose it through APIs to somebody else. We could feed into Databricks, we could feed into Glean, Gem uh, Gemini. Google, uh, Amazon Q, Bedrock, a lot of possibilities. So we don't have an opinion that we have to be the search tool of the enterprise. Right. But we you want could all be part of it. We would we through would be APIs. Part. We want to be the, the choice of all secondary. We want all of the yeah. world's secondary data, yeah. backup data to be in our platform. And this provides you now the ability to access that data. Okay. So this is the where are we on this map section, which is uh, Gaia. Uh, Gaia Cloud and Gaia On-Prem. Where is that in the state of development and oh, customer availability? So, uh, the cloud is already available, uh, built on the, underneath of uh, leveraging the NVIDIA stack. Uh, On-Prem's coming out you know, in, in a couple of months, so middle of this year, I yeah. think. And we have a lot of customer uh, interest. Actually, I think the On-Prem part surprised us. I thought it would be very heavily cloud. There are a number of customers who are reluctant to send their large backup data into the cloud as yet. Sure. So I think that this is, and you're going to hear us do more even with Google. Yeah. Stay tuned. The Google conference is coming up next month. Okay. So there's more coming out there with yeah. Thomas and that team. So you should expect us to do a lot of work with four companies NVIDIA, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. I would say those are four good, large, impactful companies. And the way they deploy those onto on-prem servers like HP, Cisco, yeah. Dell, and others. By the way, I think you're helping, right? You're, you're helping those companies extend pretty much everywhere. Yes. Again, back to hybrid multi-cloud. Enterprises don't want to do business with companies in the future that only do cloud. Yes. Or they only do on-prem. Yes. They want both because that's the reality. Right. And as much as we sometimes forget that, this is what this is what they want. So, uh, final question on Gaia. Are there any customer stories you can share that you're most proud of, of your customers using Gaia in the cloud? Yeah, I think what we find, most of them are uh, less comfortable with us talking about them by name as yet. Sure. Because some of the stories are sensitive, but these are companies who have large amounts of documents, some in public sector, there's a European customer in public sector we're working with that collects a lot of documents yeah. from the government, and they want to be able to search and summarize. A lot, another company has got all their historical notes yeah. from meetings they want to search and summarize. So what we're finding is it's typically large amounts of unstructured data, and they want to search and summarize it. Okay. That's it, legal firms that are talking about e-discovery. Uh, and then we're starting to see some early cases of various different verticals oil and gas, uh, and, what, and then maybe even the medical industry, we've got a few early conversations with. So my hope is to cover a number of the horizontal use cases that are repeatable in every industry, legal, right. document search, and then we'll start getting into seismic data, call data records and yeah. telco, financial uh, consumer loan documents. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it really is fat, very simple. Unstructured data, text and images. Right. And being able to search that without, I mean, in the absence of a tool like this, what you typically do is you take that data out of backup. It's a process called rehydration. Yeah. And then you build a, a rag tool on top of it. This circumvents that step altogether. Oh, this is great. So, great Gaia conversation here. You, you gave us a little bit of a, you know, make sure you check out Google Cloud Next. I appreciate it. What does the rest of the year look like for you? What are your you know, your, your 
again, no inside baseball required, but you know, you've committed to the board and, and investors. This is what I want to get done. What can you share with us for the rest of 25? Yeah, we, we you know, want to create ultimately a five million revenue company. Right now, now, we've gone from number seven in the space to number one. It's a large share. startup. We're, I want, we I want, want to be I want a two billion there. dollar okay. startup, right? So we're on a run rate to get to two billion revenue, hopefully soon. As we do that, we want to then make our next milestone five billion. Somewhere along the way is a possible IPO. Yeah. We're going to think through when that time is. But to create a profitable growth, a rule of 40 company, nobody in our space right now is that rule of 40 growth and free cash flow margin. So it's at our scale. There's some we're doing very well, but much smaller than us. Uh, and then we want to just take the customer base we have and nail industries. Like right now in financial services, almost every one of the largest banks are our customers. We're working very closely with them. Same with public sector, telco, manufacturing. Uh, and then with each of these important partners, I would say the ones that I'm most interested in are some of these cloud and hardware partners. Uh, Amazon, Google, right. uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, HP, IBM, Cisco, yeah. Dell, all the ones that are right. on, the, on the cloud and hardware side. And then we're working with the system integrators, the bars, the SIs. Um, and I think the, the evolution of this is some intersection of security and AI on data. So think of us as you would imagine a Palo Alto meets Snowflake, or a CrowdStrike meets Databricks for second minute, that's us. And I think, you know, if you look at those companies, they're all on their path to five or 10 billion dollar companies. We should be able to do the same for secondary data. Primary data is like the top of the iceberg, secondary data is like the bottom of the iceberg. That's where we live. No, this is great. Sanjay, I appreciate your time, and I appreciate us being able to connect the dots for the viewers who last saw us at Veritas Close Day, it sounds like you're making a lot of progress. I mean, listen, you're a guy who is happy but never satisfied in moving this forward, and it sounds like you're doing that today. It's funny, I look back at Gaia. It looks like, oh, well, of course we would do that, but what you're doing is literally lighting up data that gets forgotten about. For sure. That nobody, nobody used before, and be able to bring that in the age of generative AI. So- You got it working so far and uh, look forward to the future. And now, Pat, my job is to allow you to explain Gaia without me in the room. No, I, and, I know. And, and we've done this. <laughs> that's awesome. And you've made it so simple <laughs> that you. I hope most people, I know there's a lot of details <laughs> below that, but- You don't need to. I don't need to. I'm the value prop guy. Totally. For enterprises. Thank, Thank you Thank so you very much. much. Appreciate it. This is uh, Pat Moorhead and Sanjay Poonin here at GTC 2025. We are talking on-prem Gaia in the hybrid cloud. Of course, you have to be on-prem and cloud. That's the wave of the future. And if you're not there, people aren't going to want to buy your stuff. So check out all of our Cohesity content out there and also everything we're going to be talking about here at NVIDIA GTC 2025. Take care. Hit that subscribe button.